Welcome to the Tandem Talk Show, where we help women dial in their nutrition and fitness so that they can lose fat, tone up, and transform their lives. And now your host from Tandem Nutrition, Coach G. Yo, hey, what's up, everyone? Coach, you here back with another exciting episode of the Tandem Talk Show. This is episode 43. I am so glad you're here with me today. If you're watching with me live today, comment live below. We have a very new and exciting episode that I know that you're going to love. And right now, we're actually streaming this episode right into our private Facebook community, our Tandem Tone Up community. And if you're watching this right now, and if you're not yet a member of our Tandem Tone Up community, go ahead and go to tandemnutrition.com forward slash Facebook to get instant access to our Facebook group where we have all our free trainings and live fat loss resources. Everyone, I am super excited about this episode today. It's it's one that I've been wanting to talk about for quite some time, and I know that you're going to love it. As I go throughout today's episode, if you have any questions at all, Please comment below. I'll be more than happy to answer those for you. And let me know if you're getting value from today's episode as well. So today's episode, we'll be we're going to be talking about the two easy fixes to end nighttime cravings. So I don't know about you all, but one of my biggest struggles when I end up going through a diet my last four or five weeks is I face a tremendous amount of overwhelming cravings that is really hard to uh, to combat and to, and to handle and, and ultimately to be consistent with as I approach my goal. Hey, if you're listening to this right now and you too have faced some type of hunger or cravings, you know, comment hunger below. Let me know that I'm not the only one who has been facing these issues throughout a diet. I know they're very, very common. And so that's why I want to talk about today, not only because of my own experience and how to handle and master and ultimately conquer these cravings, but also how we help women within our private tone up community handle and conquer these cravings as well. I want you to learn, I want you to take away from this episode some steps and strategies that you can take right now to be effective in being consistent with your goals as you go throughout each and every day. So by the way, if you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. This is a talk show that is specifically for women who are wanting to lose fat, tone up, and transform their lives. So my goal as a dietitian has always been to educate and to help empower women with knowledge and motivation to learn how to lose fat in a healthy and sustainable way. And it is exactly why we created this podcast and why we were on this show right now going over this brand new episode. So without further ado, let's hop in, hop into the first easy fix that you can do to help you cut and end your nighttime cravings. So first of all, we have to understand why cravings happen. Okay. Why do cravings happen? Now, believe it or not, cravings are cues. Okay, let me, so let me say that again. Cravings are cues. Two, one, so one of the most common times that we'll face cravings for a diet is, number one, if we're being too restrictive with our diet. Being restrictive is not good, okay? It's not sustainable. It's not healthy. It's not enjoyable. And it's really tough to be consistent. One of the most common cravings I hear from, from women, um, especially those who you come with us with questions is <clears throat> the fact that there's always some type of craving for something sweet or maybe even something salty. And, and it's very important to listen to what you're craving. Your body will tell you what it needs. If you kind of this sit and understand, Hey, this is why I'm craving. And this is why. So for example, if you're craving something really, really sweet or, you know, sugary, that can mean that you're cutting your carbohydrates too low. Hey, I'm not sure if you knew this, but believe it or not, your brain uses 120 grams of carbohydrates each day just to function. Let me repeat that. Your brain each day uses 120 grams of carbohydrates just to function. This is a big reason why I'm not a big fan of low-carb diets because once you get to a certain threshold, 
let's say up up to around 120, 110, even 100 grams, and your body doesn't have the available glucose it needs to supply energy to the brain, guess where it gets that energy from? You got it. It gets it from muscle. We do not want to use muscle for energy throughout a diet. That means that when we lose muscle, we lose the strength and the power of our metabolisms, and that's why plateaus hit throughout a fat loss journey. So number one, one of the best ways to end nighttime cravings is to be aware of what you're restricting your diet and address that in a positive way. If you find yourself cutting carbs out too much or cutting out fat, make some positive steps to achieve more of a healthy balance. In fact, one of the things that I, I see mostly and from my own experience of dieting is I would cut out carbs <clears throat> three or four years ago. I did a really strenuous contest prep diet to get down to a uh, very, very lean physique for a for a show. And I noticed that once I cut carbs, I immediately crave carbs. My brain was like, yo, I need some carbs super quickly. I was not performing well in the gym. And so my body turned on the switch and I all of a sudden became really consumed and focused on carb foods, like pancakes, sugar-free syrup, uh, even fruit. Like I had this awesome habit of, and this is a really good uh, way to curb your sweet tooth, but I love to freeze bananas. So at nighttime, I would love to freeze bananas, and then I'd, I'd get it out of the freezer at nighttime. I'd mash it up with a spoon. Then I would add some protein to it and even some sugar-free syrup with some berries. I'd mix it all up, and that's a great way to curb any sweet tooth. So it's it's very important that you're not restrictive throughout your diet. That will amplify any types of cravings that you have. And also what you restrict, it's going to persist. Okay. What you restrict, it's going to persist. Meaning that, you know, if you had that discipline now at this time to hold off on not giving in to some ice cream or maybe even some cake or some other of your favorite sweet type foods, know that there's going to be a point in time when that willpower is not there as much as it was, or that discipline is not the level that it was. You know, we're all human. It's We make mistakes. We're never perfect. And so there's going to be a time where you're faced with this sweet food again, and you may overeat that. When you restrict something for so long, there's a much higher chance in overeating and binging, and that starts a really vicious cycle of binging and restricting and binging and restricting and that that never goes in a very positive way towards achieving a healthy weight loss goal or even achieving a healthy pattern of eating so again i want you to look at your diet right now think about things that you could be restricting and say hey i'm going to fix this today comment below what's one thing that you're you're restricting that you're going to say hey coach g i commit to not restricting this and by the way when you're trying to lose body fat, you do not have to lose or you don't have to give up any types of foods. There's no foods that will automatically make you gain body fat. There's not any foods that will prevent you from losing body fat. And as you know, too, there's not any foods that will just make you make you lose body fat. So it's important not to develop or have this mindset that there's good foods and bad foods in your diet. OK, there's nutrient dense foods like <clears throat> whole grains fruits and vegetables, legumes, healthy fats, lean proteins, and there's foods that are that are non-nutrient dense, like more processed foods, like cakes and waffles and like cereals. And those are okay to have as long as we have most of our calories coming from those nutrient dense options. So again, when you're trying to achieve a sustainable physique and be consistent with your diet, so important that you do not restrict any type of food or food group unless you're, let's say, allergic to that food. In that case, please do not eat that food as that may cause some uh, issues that could uh, be harmful for you. So that's number one. One of the best ways right now to curb and end any nighttime cravings is to be aware of what foods you're restricting and go ahead and address that right away. Okay. Again, Restricting any food group as a dietitian, it is my belief, and I practice this every day. It is not healthy to restrict food groups 
from your entire diet. Like I have people who come to me, women ask me all the time, Coach G, like, what are your thoughts on intermittent fasting? Or what are your thoughts on keto? Keto is a great example, right? <clears throat> or paleo. I, I think these are, you know, these are all effective modalities or diets for fat loss. Are they the best? No. Do they have any special advantage for fat loss, right? So do does keto, does intermittent fasting have any advantage over any other diet that emphasizes a calorie deficit? I, I want you to think about that because the answer is they do not. The, the tough thing is, and they do work just like any other diet that, again, emphasizes a calorie deficit. These diets do work, but they're very hard to sustain because they're so, so restrictive. Okay. Keto, you are eating very, very, very few carbs each day. And of course, in fasting, there's no restrictive except for the time limit that you're allowed to eat in that eating window. So that's number one, <clears throat> being aware of what foods you're restricting. Number two, number two is a big one. And this is a mistake I see all the time, not only um, in those people who are a part of our community that ask us questions, but also people who just ask us questions, you know, in real life and on social media as well. And it is cravings come when the body senses a scarcity of food at extreme level. Okay. So let me put that in human terms here. Basically, if you're eating too few of calories, your body will make you feel very hungry and it will give you insane cravings. Okay, so this can be seen two different ways. Number one, if your overall calorie goal or intake is too low, your body will have insane cravings. It's like, hey, what's interesting is that when you try to lose body weight and we, when you're in a calorie deficit, your body does not know that you're trying to lose weight for cosmetic reasons. It does not know that you're trying to lose weight to look better. What it does, it senses a threat to your survival. And because there's a lack of energy, and so what your body does to survive, your body is built to survive. What it does in turn, it down regulates a few hormones to help you conserve energy. Does it make you store fat? No, there's no such thing as survival mode. But that means that you have to keep eating less and less in order to keep losing more and more. And again, your body is saying, hey, go eat something. Like one of the innate survival mechanisms is hunger cues and cravings. Like when your body tells you it's hungry, it, it knows there's a scarcity of food and it knows that to keep you alive, that you have to keep eating, which is why you get hungry. And it gives you specific cravings because it tells you what it wants you to eat, like especially carbohydrates, because your brain, when you're not fat adapted through keto, your brain will look for carbohydrates, for glucose. Okay. So it's very, very important that we're not eating too few of calories. So what does that, what, what does too few of calories look like? Well, for most women, most women do not need to be eating less than 1200 calories per day. Now, if you're five foot, less than five foot, 120 pounds, maybe that could be a good calorie goal for you. And again, you probably don't need to lose weight either. But again, we start our clients off eating the highest number of calories possible while still being able to lose body fat. And that leads for more successful fat loss journeys that are more sustainable as well. Okay. Number two, this could look like throughout a work day, let's say you have something really quick for breakfast, like cereal, and you get so busy that <clears throat> you just don't eat the rest of the day until you get home. Or, or you maybe have, you have, you skip breakfast and you go have a quick lunch and then you just don't eat until dinner. Not only will you be hungry, but you'll be from the stress. Stress will calls calls you to straight you, you to crave sugar as well. That will set you up for a dieting disaster. You're not only hungry, but now you're craving things because you're either stressed out, you're experiencing some emotions, you're not really sure how to handle this. And so, one, you're having these cravings, and the only thing you can think of is food. Hey, where what can I eat? And so it's very important to be consistent with your meals throughout the day. Do you have to have a meal every two hours? No. Do you have to have a meal every three hours? Absolutely not. Here's what science says. And by the way, as a dietitian, this is we are a science-based company. We go into research. We find out what works, what doesn't, what's effective, what's not. And we come here to give you this information. So please, um, if you don't want to take our advice, that's okay. But listen in a way that you can understand and maybe apply if it fits your lifestyle. So what's best? It's best, according to science, to have between four and six meals a day. 
spread out no more than three to five hours at a time. And the reason why that is, the reason why it's recommended to have a meal, especially a meal with protein, every three to five hours is because that's typically the amount of time it takes for that meal to digest. And so what happens after that meal digests? Let's say seven hours pass. Well, are you going to be like gaining body fat? No. Will you go in starvation mode? No. Will you start automatically losing muscle mass? No. But there is a greater chance of you using amino acids for energy, especially as that duration increases over time. So it's very important that we have a consistent consistent meal pattern throughout the day, not only to control our hunger, but also to control our cravings as well. And so that's the two easy fixes that I want to give you today to help end nighttime hunger. Number one, do not restrict your favorite foods. Don't restrict any food or food groups unless maybe your doctor told you to and you've been told perhaps you're allergic to something. That would be a great time to to not eat those foods. Number two, cravings can also hit if you're eating too few of calories overall or if you have an inconsistent meal pattern in which you either have breakfast and you don't really have any type of structured meals throughout the rest of the day, then you have dinner, or you skip breakfast, you have like a fast food lunch or a quick lunch, and again, you have a long gap between your next meal. That will heighten cravings and heighten the chances of you overeating and not sticking to your calorie goal. And that is a key to long-term fat loss success, being consistent in the calorie deficit, eating the foods that you love each and every day. So this is episode 43 of the Tandem Talk Show. If you found value in this episode, let me know below. Comment value. Comment comment your biggest takeaway. We'd love to hear from you. And by the way, if you'd like to learn more about our Tone Up coaching programs, comment Tone Up below. I'll reach out to you to see if it's a good fit for you and the goals you have. And if you're not yet a member of our private Facebook community, go to tandemnutrition.com forward slash Facebook to get instant access to our awesome community where we have all our free fat loss resources, live trainings just like this, and a whole lot more. God bless you. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Tandem Talk Show. If you're enjoying the podcast, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time.